I'm Tanya Kashner, so I'm one of the natives that John spoke about. <laughs> How are you? Is everything okay? Yesterday when I arrived, it was really rainy. And I have to tell you that I left Madara yesterday morning. It was about 26, 27 degrees at 10 a.m. And I arrived to London, which I really like. So it's a very red city, but it was about how many degrees? 14 and rain. So that's one of the advantages of Madara. So it rains. Don't you don't that's not a question, but the weather and the climate is really, really nice. Besides the food, besides John working and living there. So that's one of the advantages. I will talk to you about practical stuff. So you're moving to another country, and my dad is Portugal, so everything applies. There are some nuances that we have, which I will talk to you about. But in general, we are Portugal, so everything applies, like in the rest of the country. And you're moving to a different country. So even though a lot of the people, they speak and write in English, the, the cultural side and the way of doing things is a bit different. So you will need to get some notion of the important stuff, okay? You take a flight, you arrive, this is um, a little bit of our history. We are open for the past 28 years and, and our main activity is to help in several sectors of activity, foreigners, investors, and new residents. So, since the corporate, individual, the practical side, the family office, the administrative affairs, everything you will need to understand and to live in Portugal. You, you, the, so you will arrive in Portugal and you will or buy an apartment or buy a house or do a rental agreement or open a bank account. The first thing you need, a Portuguese fiscal number. You will not be able to do anything without a Portuguese fiscal number. If by any means you are choosing to live, in fact, in Portugal, after that, at the beginning, anyway, you will need to apply as a non-resident because you don't have yet the residency file done. So you will need a fiscal representation. You will need to get a fiscal representative, which can be a company that does this kind of like the one I'm working in, or an individual, a family member, so um, a person or a company that has a fixed address in Portugal. Basically what the, the fiscal services and the Portuguese uh, state, what they want is to make sure that once you apply for a Portuguese fiscal number, you have a contact, an address. You have a person of interest that can liaise with you between yourself and the government if something happens, if you have taxes, if they need to send an information, okay? From the moment that you start residing, in fact, in Portugal, you no longer need a fiscal representative. But until that happens, you will need to get one, okay? We have several clients that they, they use a family member who's already living there, and a lot of them that use our services also. As, as um, John to told you, and very well, we try to um, give to the clients exactly what they need related to the needs they have. So you have several options, and it's our job to provide you with the accurate information. So, Portuguese fiscal number, fiscal representation, going to the fiscal services, applying for the number. The number is done just on time. We just need to type, or you go, or we go through you with a mandate, and with a copy of your passport and your utility bill. So, a confirmation of your address, like an electricity bill or a phone bill or whatever. So I'm giving you the, the practical side so you know exactly what to do without any kind of uh, questions about that. Once you get the fiscal number, you, you can already also open a bank account. You can open a bank account as a non-resident anyway. 
if you want only to buy a real estate, to rent out, to do AL, a bank account will allow you to pay the monthly and the extra cost of the real estate without having the need to do currency operations, to transfer to have bank charges from UK to Portugal. So it will allow you to save in in the logistic, but also in in the expenses and the bank charges monthly. For the opening of the bank account, basically the majority of the banks, what they ask is the Portuguese fiscal number, confirmation of the address, the passport, and also the confirmation of your income. So if you're working, they will ask probably for the slips of your wage for the last three months and also your annual tax return. If you're not working, what they will ask is the confirmation of your income. Signing rent on the bill. So a lot of the clients, they think, okay, I will go to Portugal, I will rent out for six months, check the property, see what they want, if I adapt. Why do I put signing rent on the bill? Because you, Besides everything we already spoke, and I know that a lot of you probably think that a rental agreement is very straightforward, which it is, and it, the document will be in English also, if it's not in English, if it's only in Portuguese, don't sign it, okay? <laughs> because a lot of the times people think that all the documents that you sign, as you are in Portugal, they need to be in Portuguese, but they need to be in a language that you understand. So, if, the rent, if they're not in English, they might to be in English also, besides Portuguese. Because you need to be fully aware and you need to understand what you are signing. I mean, otherwise, you don't know what you are signing. What do I put rental agreement? Because sometimes you, need, you know your timings. And you need to understand, if, if I find a good property and I want to buy it, can I close my rental agreement? Do I need to give two or three or four months notice, or do I need to fulfill the agreement? So, what will be my deposit? How many months? So, these kind of things you need to understand and then be fully aware. So, you have your timeline imposed and you can do your own decisions without being stuck to a rental agreement that you don't, you don't need for after three or four or five months, okay? Changing your physical residency into the other. So we know that with UK, you will need to be careful, careful about the domicile, but also you need to understand the practical part. And, and I will try to resume it in a very simple way. So first of all, okay, choosing the appropriate visa that you will need in order to get the residency to Portugal. Okay? Once you choose, choose that, you will need to get to gather all the documents and to apply. Usually with UK, we work often with the Portuguese Embassy, which works very, very well, and you can start the process from here, which is quite easy because you're still living here, so it will save you a lot of time, and you will have that time uh, evolve in the moving. <coughs> so it's, it's um, one of the postures that we adopt when we talk with the UK market. Well, if you choose that and you do your residency visa and you go to Portugal, okay, you will do the biometrics, which is the physical aspect of everything, and then you will get your residency card. And a lot of the people, they think, okay, I'm done. So, but that's not the case, because you need to complete the residency. The visa is the civil <coughs> part. You need to, and, and of course, this is something that sometimes we forget, or we are not aware of it. You need to go to the fiscal services and change your fiscal residency. Because until that, at, at that time, you were still a non-resident. So you go to the fiscal services and you change to a fiscal resident in Portugal with proper address. 
at that time, what we always advise is ask your access password. 99% of everything you will do in terms of fiscal is done through your password. You don't need to go to the fiscal services for that. So once the password is sent, you need to apply. Usually we, we ask, the best situation is to apply once you go there and change your address, and they will send you by post to your address in Portugal. Okay? It will take between three and five working days. Once you get your password, you will be able to do almost everything. You will check if you have real estate and taxes to pay. You can submit your annual tax return. You can analyze and see if you have questions about the non-habitual. You can submit the non-habitual to online to where the password. So ask always, don't forget to ask the password. Okay. Getting a social security number and also the local health center. As John said, we have we, we also have health issues. I'm, I mean, we're not perfect, you know? Otherwise, we, we were not only 12 million. Portugal probably. No, it's 10. 10. Mm -hmm. 10. See, only 10 million. You only get 2,000 million. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I have to tell you that even though we have health uh, questions, the majority of, of the people that live, especially in, in Madara, and I have to talk about Madara because it's where I live, they are very satisfied. It works. I mean, the system works. With some difficulties, but it works. So you are entitled to get your social security number and you are entitled to insert yourself in a local health center. I know you will say, but I have a private, private health um, policy. Good, that's good. But if it's 2 a.m. and you're at home and you need to go to a public hospital, so let's get you inserted in social security. We never know, so you need to be always prepared and you will not buy anything to be inserted anyway. And imagine that you need to get a vaccine, do a vaccination or something like that. So it's, it's always good to, to be able to do that. Being a provisor in Nevada, I don't know, do you still want to continue to work or you're, you're going to retire already in Portugal? Being a provisor in Nevada and when I say Madara, I say in Portugal because it's, it's, it's applicable to the entire country. After you go to the fiscal services, you get your password, like I said, if you want to start an activity, if you want to do um, like a freelancing um, service within Portugal, outside Portugal, you can also insert and do your inscription online. As I, I told you, almost everything you will do, it's going to be online. So, you choose some of the main advantages of freelancing in Portugal. You will be exempt of, of social security for the first 12 months. So, that's a very good option. I have to tell you that we have a lot of young people and freelancers coming to Portugal to live and to work. And why? Because it's very easy to work from Portugal to the world. We have a very good communication system, um, a very nice and, and, and interesting community of digital nomads, of entrepreneurs, and it works very well. So people like to live in, in a pleasant country, but also in a country that has conditions to work to abroad and from there to abroad. The only thing, once you become a resident, <laughs> the only thing that you will have as an obligation to the site is every year to present your annual tax return, which is done also with your password, so the holy password, and it's done between April and June of the next year. For example, if you become a resident in October in, in Portugal, in any part of the country, until that period, you will need to present your annual tax return from January, from April, because in UK it's from April, right? So from April until September here, and then in Portugal, the annual tax is done from January to December. So you will present the last three months 
in Portugal between April and June of the next year. Authority, social security, hospitals, and commercial associations. So, the compliance and the information and all the public entities, we are Europe. Portugal is European. You've been in Europe already. So, the basics are the same. They didn't change. If you go to the bank, they will ask all the same documents that they ask you here. Probably they will ask detailed information about your activity because your information about uh, their activities in UK, not in Portugal, so that's what they will ask you more. But all, all the, the path between this, the association and the authorities and yourself, it's very easy to do. All the websites of the fiscal services, the social security, even banks, they all have everything in English. They are very online user friendly. So if you have questions, they have always a help desk. This is all only to tell you that it's not, you will feel at home. That's, that's always what I say to, to the clients and to the people that I talk with. You will feel at home. <coughs> Because there are, I think that according with my experience, and I work in this sector for the past 28 years, and a lot, I've seen a lot of the clients coming to Portugal and bringing the personal, because we all, we all have personal things that we don't want to say goodbye to, so at least one of them. See? Um, and you have to, I have to tell you that if you become a resident in Portugal, you have the right to bring a container with your personal items without paying tax and your personal car. This is very important because the customs and the rights, it's, it's a cash situation. So, and when you're moving, everything matters. And um, I've seen that a lot of the people that are moving are not aware of this. And this is very important. One thing I have to tell you, personal stuff. So don't buy everything, put in a container, forget to take the tags and think it's personal <laughs> because they will check. Okay? I can tell you that because I know they will check. So if you buy, take the tags. Okay? <laughs> two minutes, don't worry, Christina, two minutes, I know. So another thing is companies. You still active, you want to do a business, you want to do anything in Madara, we have a lot of um, potential to do businesses because we, we don't have a lot of the stuff you have here. So we, we want to have, of course. Corporate rate, 14.7. Very, very good. In Madara. In the mainland, corporate rate is 21 plus local taxes, so it will arrive to 26. In Madara, you have 14.7. If you go to Madara to reside and you want to do international business, you will have 5% of the It's a EU company, you can do international activity, you can use all the 77 double tax treaties that Portugal has, all the EU directives, you will have a VAT number and a trading number automatically, so it's not upon request. Um, and it's very easy to do business from Madara to the so think about that, and you will see that we have additional advantages besides the climate, the food, and the people. Thank you. Thank you.